Hello mortals, I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. <laughs> Continuing my series of looking at some of the top creators of booktube, I thought I'd do an episode of Joel of Fictional Fates. This guy is fascinating. He is a new booktuber who has blown up. His channel is huge, especially for someone just starting out. He has, at this time I'm recording this, over 36,000 subscribers, and he only started three months ago. What? What happened to him is what every booktuber dreams about when they first start a channel. So who the heck is Joel, aka Fictional Fates? He is a self-professed black bisexual British boy. And did he just call himself that because of alliteration? Well, I'm a bisexual black British boy. I mean, obviously he's not British. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. He's Welsh. <gasps> One positive thing that came from the shit show known as the year 2020 is awareness of the lack of representation of black persons of color for reasons that we won't go into right now. If you are watching this from the future and racism is dead and gone, Google it. <laughs> but this hit booktube hard as face it, it is dominated by white cis women. And at the time, a lot of booktubers and their supporters were suddenly subscribing and seeking out black booktubers, which is great. And that's when Joel came on the scene in June of 2020. Now, I've never heard of him prior to that, but apparently he was big as a bookstagrammer, or he had a lot of friends in the booktube community already. So that was helpful. I'm not sure, but basically everyone who reads a book began subscribing to his channel. So there was this sudden wave of people who joined his channel at that time. The stars were aligned or whatever. But it's one thing to ride a wave. But the question is, the question is, can he deliver the goods? The other question is, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, why aren't you? Hit the thumbs up and the notification bell and do all those good things. So when I watched his first video, the booktube newbie tag, which most of us have done, it's a rite of passage, I was blown away. It looked professional, well edited, he practically made love to the camera. You know what I mean. <laughs> because of quarantine and um, all the recent events, Reading has really become a passion for me again, and because of everything that's been going on, I feel like I now am more empowered to use my voice in spreading diverse reading and um, representation and showing that Black Lives Matter. It's time for a community to come together and to like truly celebrate how diverse we all can be. So for today's video, I was pondering like what I should be doing because I was like, it's a first video, I really want to make an impact, you know, want to do something unique. And then I just settled for the booktube newbie tag. I thought for sure he must have done YouTube before. It was that good. And people seemed to agree. His newbie tag video has almost 70,000 views. Um, let me say that again. His first video, the newbie tag, has almost 70,000 views. And it did not stop there. His videos after seem like he's been doing booktube for years. The talent of this kid is out of this world. Of course, you cannot sustain a steep trajectory. No one can. The heat of his channel has tapered off, which is expected. But Joel, if you're watching this, you're probably not, but if you are, I hope you don't think this has anything to do with what you're doing because you are doing everything perfectly. It is just totally a fact that things have to cool down a little bit 
Even so, his videos are still getting great views. So let's take a look at this Wonderkin's latest video. So the title of this is the volume inside this 50 plus book haul is astronomical and holy smokes it's over an hour long. <laughs> okay if you don't know this I don't react to the entire videos so if you've ever seen any of my other reaction videos please check out those creators. <laughs> but we're gonna do this video 50 plus book haul. So I received almost my high in books. What? I see some Stephen King in there. Hi friends, my name is Joel and Hi. welcome back to my booktube channel. If you have yet to check out my reading vlog where I read Leora from the book Leo's favourite book, you should go check that out because I read the Bone Season it's for the good. first time and you can definitely check out my reactions from that video. And it's part of a new series that I'm starting where I'm going like to be reading different people's favourite books. And if you have yet to check out my Twitter or my bookstagram, you should go check that out as well because I post some extra bookish content that you're not going to see here. For today's video, we are back with another book haul and everyone, friends. Um, last month we hauled 23 books. This month we have Does almost 50. Does he read 50. all these books? The majority of this month's books came from <laughs> the gifts that you gave to me from my Amazon wish list, and oh, I boy. just thank you so much. I am so appreciative. Yeah, I think there's quite a nice even balance between books that I bought, between books that were gifted and books that were sent to me. I think we're just going to get right into it because there are so many books it. that I... <laughs> Yeah, grab your beverage of your choosing and settle down because this is probably going to be a long video. So yeah, this first is. pile of books are books that I had bought. And so let us begin. I'm first going to start off with Ray Bearer by John Nifueco. This book I recently reviewed on my channel. This book is just such a nice beginner YA fantasy. It has a nice found family aspect with a subtle hint of romance, but it's not the focus of the story the found family oh, is. And it's something that we need a lot more in YA. Ray Bearer follows Tarisai, who basically has been trained secluded her entire life with her mother called the Lady and a few extra helpers. And one day she is told that she has to enter this contest in order to become one of the Prince's Council of Eleven and receive the Ray, which means that she devotes her love and her life to the Prince. When that happens, the lady has then told her that she has to kill the Prince. And it's a very, very cool story and I really enjoyed reading it. And so I definitely wanted to get every single edition possible. This Now this reminds me of the Forgotten Beasts of Eld. Uh, just as he's describing it. I wonder, is he going to go into this much detail for each of these books? No wonder this is an hour long video. Oh my gosh. Is the UK paperback. I also just need to get now the US arc and the US hardback. The cover art is super gorgeous and I was obsessed. Nice. I needed to get a print copy to support John Nifueco and her work. And she recently did reach the New York Times bestseller list, which is amazing. Like, wow, we stan, we love to see it. I cannot wait for the sequel. The sequel is just going to slay. Next, I picked up The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. This one was highly recommended to me by so familiar. many people, but especially Fadwa from Word Wonders. I'll probably be reading this next week in like very early September, probably right before I read The Poppy War. I think I'll probably need this before oh, I, I read it. Oh, I want to read The Poppy War. Maybe I should until after. So this one is about Lucy, who is offered a job translating an old French astronomy text, and it follows Catherine St. Day, who basically basically just wants to like wipe her hands clean of her husband's scientific work and so the both of them work together in order to like kind of translate Looks like this a text lesbian and romance. the more they spend time together the more they fall in love but sabotage and underhanded games threaten to split them apart it just sounds really cool and like something like really like fantastical and amazing fits into the hand quite easily and it's only like 300 ish pages so i definitely think i'll be able to get through this within a day oh it just looks really cute and i cannot wait to get into it and i cannot 
cannot wait to scream to Fadwa with all of my reactions next week. Next, we have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This one I was supposed oh, to read no. during my romance reading vlog. However, I didn't get round to it, but this one was recommended to me by Noelle. I'm really excited purely because from the synopsis, it just sounds amazing. This one follows Lucy, who basically has won the hearts of everyone in her office, except for Joshua. And basically they both have kind of like an arch nemesis rival situation. There's a promotion that's coming up for grabs and Lucy and Joshua, I think, are head to head. And if Lucy gets the promotion, she'll become Joshua's boss. If she doesn't get it, she says she'll resign because she doesn't really want to be under Joshua. The game is afoot, but Joshua is basically living in Lucy's head rent free. And so I'm thinking she's already like attracted to him a bit, but I think Joshua is the one that's probably gonna initiate the romance. I, do I don't know, or maybe Lucy will, who knows? She might take the power, but I'm really excited to be getting into this. And I think from Noelle's video, she said there's, it's about like publishing companies. And as someone who wants to work in pub- Can we just mention how fantastic his voice is? He's so articulate and his accent is so crisp. Because I've heard some other Welsh accents that aren't so attractive. And he's an attractive guy. And like it or not, I've said this before, but sometimes you just are drawn to attractive people. And it doesn't have to be physical attractiveness, although it is in this case. And of course it is in my case. But just the attractive personality of someone really can draw in viewers. <laughs> Next, we have two Stephen King, used Yay. Stephen King novels. We have Sleeping Beauties by Stephen and Owen King, and then Outsider by Stephen King as well. And I got these. Now, these, I haven't read these Stephen King books. I haven't read all of Stephen King's. I have read a lot of them. Um, those are interesting choices. Those are not his most well-known works, that's for sure. So I wonder if he's a big Stephen King stan, and that's why he's picked up these particular two books. I don't know. <laughs> From Troutmark, which is a used bookstore in Cardiff. I went there on a date and it was just really nice to go and just to kind of like. So raise your hand if whenever you hear Cardiff, you think of Doctor Who and Torchwood. <laughs> That's what I thought of. Like browse all of the books there and hopefully not annoy the guy that I went with. Noelle is a big fan of used kings and so I was like I have now got two used kings and so maybe it is the start of my king collection who knows but I definitely think I want to try and go back and find another used king for Noelle because she might not have the UK editions of any of them so I think it'd be really good for her to have them in her collection. Yeah I just I just really enjoy how gorgeous these both are. Oh wow he has written a lot of books. <laughs> So this yeah. one, it's a crime horror story, I guess. It follows a crime that's been committed. The All the evidence points to one single person. However, he was 70 miles away with an ironclad alibi. And so they've got to try and figure out how he could be in two places at once. That's all really the book says. And then Sleeping Beauties by Stephen and Owen King follows this virus, which given the current pandemic, uh, um, this follows a <laughs> virus that is basically making women fall asleep and the surviving men start to fight one another whilst the only surviving woman, Lila, Lila, is fighting to stay awake while she's trying to solve everything that's going on. And this already sounds really intriguing to me. Again, it's kind of one of those like mystery novels as opposed to like King's horrors that everyone kind of knows. And I'm definitely gonna try and read at least one King in November, not November, in October. Next, also from Trademark, I got a- Now, if you're reading King for the first time, I would really suggest you go to his earlier books like Carrie, um, Christine, Firestarter. I really liked Firestarter. And of course, if you're into fantasy, The Stand is his magnum opus, which I think is his best work. But also the Dark Tower trilogy, which is also fantasy-based. But um, I'm interested to know what he thinks of these two books, because I haven't read them. <laughs> And then the next book is another gorgeous, 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 gorgeous book. And that is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Oh. Lewis. Just look at this cover. Look at this. I picked this for Shelf. I didn't actually pick it, but I shelved this book on Shelve It or Shove It. And yeah, I do like that cover. That's why I picked it, obviously. Don't know anything about it, though. 
this cover. Wow, and the nakedness as well is just really nice and the color scheme of this amazing, amazing. How Do people actually strip off their covers as soon as you get a hardback? Because I never have, but I guess that's a thing. <laughs> However, we do have to give a little bit of a mention to the UK cover. Ugh. It's not, it's, it's, it, <laughs> let's just move on. And I just think I'm having a kick for sapphic sci-fi lately. Like this one is oh. sapphic sci-fi. This one is sapphic sci-fi. This one we'll be getting into in a second. This is going to be a book that I'll be reading next month. So this one follows First Sister, Hero, and Leto, who basically have their own respective stories in this. First Sister has like no voice, no name, no basically no identity. And so she's given to the military as kind of a comfort woman. Leto basically sacrifices everything for his military, but after a defeat, he's basically for gotten by them but he's like no more no more i'm gonna do something about this and hero basically spends a lot of their time conforming to other people's standards whilst also being a highly trained assassin basically fulfilling other people's ah. requests but their story is again no more they're going to change that about themselves but yeah i'm really excited to be getting into this soon and i just think it's gonna be really amazing <laughs> She also gifted me a book this month. She gifted me Brandon Sanderson's The Final Empire, which is the first book in the Mistborn. Oh, The Mistborn. I love Brandon Sanderson. I thought this was a new book. I was like, what? I didn't hear about it. Now, The Mistborn novels, if you haven't read them, has one of the most unique magic systems ever created. If you're into fantasy, Sanderson kind of is a must read, in my opinion trilogy and it's in this stunning cloth bound edition like i saw these when i was talking to aaron aka booked and busy it just spoke to me and i really was just like yes i want it brandon sanderson's writing is something that i have been scared of getting into for the longest time i've just decided it's better really? to kick my fear in the gut and just go ahead and read all the books that i've been no reading reason for to fear time. there's like this whole thing about like you haven't read fantasy until you've read sanderson but i disagree i think that there is like a multitude of different fantasies that you yeah, can read true. and still have read fantasy like let's talk about the poppy war city of brass like i don't need to read a fantasy by a man to have read fantasy so <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, Sanderson's books are something that I have been intrigued by. His attitudes towards world building have been really influential. So this one tells a story about a hero who failed to save the world. And for a thousand years since, the world has been nothing but mist and ash and has been ruled by an immortal ruler known as the Lord Ruler. This one is about to change because a heist and a revolution is being planned. And throughout it all, we're going to have an unlikely heroine, a urchin named Vin, and it already speaks to a lot of intrigue and mystery. Um, I know that there is a magic system called Allomancy in this, which already like kind of intrigues me as well because it's the magic of metals. And again, I want to thank Yasmin for gifting me this. I am so, so happy that we're friends and I just, yeah, thank you. The next book that I received from Karen was Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. Fun fact, Karen actually ugly cried in her office whilst reading this and <laughs> that basically was the last thing that sold me on this book and now I can see why. I did this in my romance reading vlog so if you want to see my full reactions you should go watch that. Yeah, I, I saw his reading vlog. Um, he really liked Red, White and Royal Blue and I know a lot of people do. I was not one of them. I thought there were a lot of issues with the plot. Um, but hey, I think it would make a great Netflix movie. Um, if you're interested in my review, I'll put it up here. And of course, no offense to anyone who has really loved this novel because I know a lot of people have, just not me. <laughs> However, this book was just so lovely and amazing and fluffy. So this basically follows Alex, who is the first son of the United States, and Henry, who is the Prince of Wales. Basically, the both of them get into a bit of an altercation during a gathering. And so in Wait. order to stop the tensions between international relations, they enter into a, like a fake Instagrammable friendship. And I mean, this book is gay. It just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. <laughs> it's and very deeper. gay. And I thoroughly loved reading this. It was just such a nice read. And I just really liked it. And it's amazing. Go pick it up. And yeah, all I want now is the hardcover. Now, this is kind of interesting because I've heard uh, some other British booktubers who did not appreciate the depiction of the 
UK prince in this novel or the royal family. But he seems to have thought it was spot on, so I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it wasn't the prince himself, but just the UK-isms that uh, some people were askance at when reading this novel. But I don't know. I'm not British. <laughs> the copy of this and again thank you so much to karen for gifting me this and so these are the books that i received from publishers which basically ends the book haul i've received so, so many books this month i don't know how you to did. process this um i was <laughs> aiming to carry all of the books that i did receive this month however i don't think i'm going to be able to carry this month hence i'm going to try and put them all in a pile and we'll see if it's as tall as i am we'll see how this goes <laughs> if he's getting sponsorships and getting all these books from publishers, he is killing it. Hand back. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like having a younger sibling. This pile is massive. I was just looking at how the pile was growing and I just kept getting overwhelmed by the amount of support and the amount of like, love that you've all have showed me, like... <laughs> Look at what? This I don't know, I just feel very privileged in the sense that a lot of you were able to gift me books and publishers had sent me books as well. And I just hope that I'll be able to read them all just so that I can make each and every book worth it. Yeah, I just want to thank you all so much for all of the love and support that you've given me. It's truly overwhelming and loving. And like, I know the amount of words that I am saying does not convey the amount of thankfulness that I have for each and every one of you. And it's hard to put things into words, but thank you so if you like this book haul be sure to give this video a thumbs up and if I you're will. new here why don't you consider clicking that subscribe button so that you're notified when i already I subscribed next. this week's shout outfits goes out to peach and ace who is basically a new booktuber and she oh. recently did a review of um uh, I was gonna grab the book, but it's at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> she recently did a review of Weird Dreams to Zen by Janelle Angeles, and so I will have her channel linked in the description down below, and you should definitely go show her all of your love and support because she is a new booktuber, like I mentioned, and so let's get her some hype. If you wanted to find me on any other social media platforms, I'll have my social media links in the description down below, but also I'll have my coffee and my Amazon wish list down below too, and yeah, I just... I'm really, 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 I kind of want to keep this pile of books here, but at the same time, <laughs> I know they might inevitably fall. So I'm probably just going to like, see how long it lasts. I guess until the next video. Bye friends. Now that was so cool that he shouted out a smaller booktuber at the end of the video. Very classy. And um, this type of video isn't my favorite. I know some people love them, but I wonder if he has listed those 50 books down below because there's no way I can absorb half of what he has presented. So, no. But that's my thing about big book hauls is usually they don't list the books later because there were a couple that I was thinking, oh, that sounds interesting to me. But if you're interested in this full video, definitely check him out because he is very charismatic. Or check out his other videos because he does do vlogs and reviews and that type of thing. Anyway, so that is Joel, also known as Fictional Fates. I think you can see why he is crushing it on book two. I can only imagine great things from him in the future. His editing is on point. His personality is adorable, obviously. And he's only just started. And I think he can be one of the tops of the tops. And especially if he can find some kind of niche, like some style like Jesse the Reader or talent for talking about elf penises like Cindy, <laughs> or a unique series like Dominic Noble, he can really make a career of this, at least I think so. 
my God, what if he starts doing drag? Then I wouldn't be the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. Aww. <laughs> nah, he wouldn't do that. Would he? Until next time, may all the books you read be blessed. Thank you.